Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to photograph with the Pixel 6. It's considered one of the best Milky Way photos that you can do with a smartphone. But what it does is cheating. So in this video I'm going to focus on the Pixel 6, not how to photograph the Milky Way. Of course, you have to avoid the light pollution, you have to avoid the moon, all of that. So I have two videos talking about that. If you want to know how to photograph the Milky Way specifically, I suggest those videos. And this one, let's focus on the Pixel, on the grandparents camera and the iPhone 13. I'm gonna record my screen as well. So let's do this photo. Let's go to uh, night mode and it's showing up the moon. When it realizes that it's in a tripod, it shows the stars. That's the mode you want to be, okay? And let's press the button up. And they're gonna start for four minutes taking pictures of the Milky Way. If I'm not mistaken, they're gonna take 15 pictures and then stack them, okay? That is the technique. If you are wondering what stacking is, is an astrophotography technique that uses a bunch of images to detect what is noise and what is the actual image. Because noise is random, but the image is not. By comparing between a bunch of images, the software can detect what is noise and what is the actual image. And we already seen that in the preview, a very interesting image. Four, three, two, one. Okay, it's done. Okay. Now, a very cool thing is that it makes you automatically a time-lapse, a mini time-lapse. A little bit useless for four minutes, uh, usually, my time lapses take two hours at least to make 10 seconds. At least you have that. This is a very freaking expensive smartphone. Why not compare it with something cheaper like the grandparents camera, okay? This is the Canon M100. It has an APS-C sensor. It's a quite big sensor for a camera this size. But I have the 7 Artisans 12mm f2.8 on it. Let's take a shot with this one. Now, 6400 and I know it's way too much ISO for this camera. Focus this in infinity, 15 seconds, okay. Can this cheaper option beat the Pixel? Now, what I'm gonna do is make this shot for 4 minutes. If you know this camera doesn't have or the intervalometer inside, I'm gonna use a technique that I show on that video over there, okay? So using the smartphone to trigger the camera via Wi-Fi. And I put my clock to beep at four minutes. So when it arrives four minutes, I'm gonna stop. But I could continue if I wanted. An advantage of this system that I created here, okay? Uh, another thing that you have to remind here with this camera is that you have to remove the long exposure noise reduction because if you take 15 seconds to take a picture, you're gonna need another 15 seconds to take the next picture, okay? So there we go, the four minutes are done. Let's stack these images and see what we get in the computer. So later that night, a friend of mine showed up with an iPhone 13 and we're gonna compare with our shots, of course. So let's tackle first the question, iPhone 13 versus the Pixel 6. Starting with the Pixel, you go like, what the hell? This is the actual photo that I took during the recording of this video and it's out of focus. Fortunately enough, I do test everything before recording the video and I took the, this picture. It is in focus, so let's use this one as a reference, okay? There you go, so there is the image of the pixel. But compare it with the iPhone. Ooh, the iPhone really isn't that great. It looks, to be honest, it looks terrible. Please remind yourselves that this image, it's only 30 seconds, it's not stacked because the software of the iPhone doesn't have that. But to give it credit, there is no noise, but I really prefer the colors. This is a brown, brown everywhere. This one, it's a little bit better, I think, color-wise, okay? The iPhone AI tried to remove all the noise and, well, everything went to poop. As you can see, you don't even see the horizon of the sea here, which you can clearly see on this one. So, yeah. Sorry, iPhone, but you don't have what it needs to photograph the Milky Way. It would have if they wanted to, 
and that includes Samsung, that includes Xiaomi, that includes uh, OnePlus, because the stacking software is open source. So everybody could apply the stacking technique if they want it on their smartphones. So let's go to the real fight, the grandparent camera, the M100 versus the very expensive Pixel 6. As you can see, there is a DNG over here on this image. If you don't know, you can activate to photograph RAW in the Pixel. It's hide it behind the menu but you can turn it on but it what is funny is that it doesn't have 16 images of dng it just have one of this shot so that means that this dng is actually the stacked image in raw but it is a, a strange raw to be honest it's only seven and a half megabytes and only a bit depth of 14 bits only seven and a half megabytes is really really strange because this should be at least 20 megabytes. Another thing that you see, it only says that it has 16 seconds of exposure. No, it has 16 seconds each photo during 4 minutes. So this number, I don't think it's right, but the ISO it's 204. That's mind-blowing because uh, it should be more ISO, but I guess they didn't add the time and they reduced the ISO. You do you, but if the image is good, it's good. Comparing so the DNG against the JPEG, you can see that they corrected a little bit the vignetting and they corrected a little bit the lens distortion. Nice. This image over here is the M100 stacked image made by Sequator. So I stacked all the images uh, on Sequator and we have a TIFF and a TIFF that it has 16 bit. That means that it's practically raw, okay? And it has a huge megabyte count, almost 140 megabytes. As you can see, it's 225 seconds, so around four minutes of shutter speed. Well, the ISO, it's the original ISO of each individual photo. Let's compare these two images. As you can see, there is little to no information on this image, and comparing with the pixel, you can start to see some difference here, especially the dynamic range. If I zoom in in the landscape, this image has a low dynamic range. Not bad for a smartphone, to be honest, but nothing compares with a real big sensor, okay? Both of them have a little bit of noise, but I think, especially here, you can see there is a bunch of noise over here that the Canon one has less noise. A little bit on the color noise side. Another thing that you can notice as well is the field of view. This has a wider field of view. And this one has a narrower field of view. Honestly, this JPEG that it spit out from the pixel is ugly AF. It's a shades of brown. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna edit this DNG and the TIFF, the stacked images from Canon and see what we're gonna get. So there we go. Now I want to compare this. This is the original JPEG from the Pixel 6 with my edit. I edit this image with the free tools of Lightroom. So you can have a Lightroom on your computer for free with an Adobe account and on your smartphone. But you are limited which tools you can use and I use only the tools that, that are free. But the colors, god damn Google, why this is the shades of, of brown poop, why it's not colorful like this. So this is not a mask, not in a, this is naturally on the image. So when I push the white balance to blue, the Milky Way started to pop up in red. Beautiful. The actual Milky Way is like that. So very, very good. Really, uh, that seven and a half megabytes has a lot of information on it. So let's open Canon. It has a beautiful field of view and a lot of dynamic range that it doesn't have on the pixel, especially on the landscape. As you can see, I add a little bit of noise reduction, actually on both images, and you can see that the dynamic range is very, very short. If I push the dark areas in here, the noise would be just unbearable, okay? And this one, I didn't push as hard the noise reduction, but it has a little bit of noise reduction. Honestly, by the dynamic range, it's very, very beautiful. As you can see, the Milky Way here has a bunch of start, a bunch of details. The nebulas, you can start to see them over here. Really, really cool. 
this one it's yeah it has a little bit of detail but not as good as the Canon as you can see the aperture of the pixel is f 1.9 and this one it doesn't say here but uh, it's f 2.8 you're gonna say why this image is brighter than the pixel because it's a way bigger sensor it has room to have a bigger photo sensible pixel absorbing light than the pixel so the pixel it's a very small sensor even if they could add a one inch sensor couldn't beat a APS-C sensor well if you want to go big and go bad a full frame will be even better okay the question is which one do you prefer honestly if i would print i would push a little bit uh, more the contrasts on the milky way and i would print out this way more than this it's good enough for instagram to impress your friends but it's way off from a professional look especially when you compare with a canon now remember the canon is 250 euros to buy a, uh, a camera like that second hand it will be even cheaper than that in 100 euros lands on it so around 350 euros and the pixel it's around 600 euros or more now this comes down to you to your own choice okay if you really want to explore photography a real camera will get you better results but yeah you're gonna have to stack yourself you have to learn to edit you have to learn the process of being an actual photographer this is frozen pizza okay it doesn't make you a chef hitting pizza on the oven okay and leave down below your comments what you think about this and yeah for me it's not really a big surprise but i was impressed how bad this jpeg is uh, honestly google what the hell when you could have way better colors but there you go drop a like if you learned something comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this i am miguel until next time see ya